had an uncomfortable night here. It was absolutely terrible, to be honest. Uh, when there was great when the tide's going out, but when the uh, tide's coming in, it's like a washing machine. So I'm pretty slight, sleep deprived, and uh, I'm going to carry on heading north. Uh, Brampton is about 12 nautical miles further on, and and then I've got the Goldsmith, and that's about 21 or something like that. So. It's blowing, I'd reckon, 15 to 20 knots from the southeast. Uh, there's the flag going. So I'm just going to go with a jib and have a day off from sailing. I was a bit hard yesterday. I'm putting my rudder down now, then I'll cast off the buoy and I'll uh, follow, follow this bloke out called Kiko. It's now about 11 o'clock in the daytime. I think he'll be going the same way. We've left our mooring and I'm uh, leaving St. Bees. I was thinking of being able to go in there and uh, an anchor and still be able to uh, have enough water, but by the looks of those catamounts, they're high and dry. On Keswick, uh, there's a house right on the top of the hill. And there's another one I can see just there. Uh, and there's an airport here that runs along the, uh, the side of the island. And here we are uh, going down this channel. And that will end up in the open sea the other side. Well, it's definitely a short runway. Very nice houses up there on the uh, sides of the hill, if you like isolation. And the house is on Kes Keswick Island. And behind us on the other side is St. Bees. Looking from the uh, eastern, eastern side, pointing west. And we're going to head down there to uh, Brampton. So we're going to be going on the western side of that island, which is basically on your uh, left. We're doing 5.1 and we've got uh, 10 miles. So we should be there in two hours off that point, basically. The island in front is Brampton and that large hill behind is actually Carlisle, which is a separate island. And we're going to go round that headland in front and then I'm going to try and find somewhere to anchor. Hopefully out the swell. You never know, might never know our luck. Looking back is where we came from. And the protein line is letting me down again. I've got room in the uh, fridge now for a bit of fish. We're passing this headland here on the uh, chart plotter on Brampton Island. And this is what it looks like. And I was hoping there'd be a load of sailing boats in there. And there's one catamaran in there. So, I'm probably going to go in there and give it a go. Well, I thought this lot would give us a bit of protection. But it's uh, still very rolly in here. Might have to try somewhere else. We're coming into the, the gap between Brampton and Carlisle Island. Uh, they actually basically join with coral. Well, I'm coming into this anchorage. Now you might be able to just see the resort of Brampton on the corner. I'm uh, sitting down here having a beer, uh, looking at the sunset. 
from Brampton Island. Central Queensland. Maybe a bit north. And there's not going to be much of a sunset tonight. It's already gone down but we've got a little bit of pink cloud. Cheers everyone. Oh, that was good. Had a good night's sleep, absolutely brilliant here between Brampton and Carlisle Island, just inside Swordfish Point. Anyway, the tide's out now. It's, uh, it's you know, really nice. Uh, there's, I don't know what you can see through here. There's kind of a sandbank there in behind it. There's a little bit of water. And then the sand between uh, Carlisle and uh, Brampton Island was sitting here at low tide in 3.4 meters of water. So I could uh, basically move up another 100 meters to be honest and uh, still be okay. But anyway, I'm all right here. And uh, tomorrow I'm gonna go for a walk up to the top of this hill up here and see if I can get some uh, 4G in order to uh, send a movie off. This is the boats in the bay. It's very hard to hold this. Uh, blowing so hard it's very hard to hold the uh, thing steady. And there's three boats behind me as well. Anyway, it's blowing about 25 knots I reckon and I'm happy to be in here. I'm baking a uh, caramel cake at the moment. Uh, it's just about to come out the oven. Not bad, eh? It's looking good. <clears throat> it's looking pretty good. I'll just have to check it again in a minute. And, uh, yeah, I've tidied the boat up. So the boat's pretty tidy. I spent a few hours on this, more than that. It took me till 11 o'clock, but uh, motivation was one thing. I've got the board up and the uh, rudder up and uh, we're rolling a little bit, but I don't mind that. I'm gonna go over there. I uh, believe there's a walk over there somewhere. So I'm gonna go and have a look and see what we can do. Behind all every boat is Goldsmith, which is about 12 nautical miles from here. I'm walking up this path and I'm a bit puffed and there's a big pile of dirt there. And you wonder how that got there. It's bush turkeys. This is what the track should look like. It's not a bad track to be honest, even though the resort's closed, you can still use it when it's not raining. Just walking down this path and we've got a little bit of kind of nice where the sun's breaking through the canopy. We've got these nice, whatever they are. Anyway, we'll keep going. It's not bad walking so far. This walk over to the other side is uh, two kilometers. Well, I've, I've walked over uh, Brampton Island to the other side so I can actually get a, uh, a, 
decent phone signal and I've got 4G with about two bars and I'm downloading a movie for tonight. I downloaded it on Hexam but I hadn't got my glasses and I couldn't see my phone and so I don't know what I did wrong but I thought I'd got you one for last weekend but uh, sorry I didn't. And here's my phone propped up in a tree. I'm sitting on this bench and the last time I looked on my phone it was going to take 46 minutes to download this movie. So. having a bit of caramel cake that I made yesterday. Little tree snake here. I'm walking back down to the boat now. And this is this tur turkey's nest. You know, it's just amazing how much uh, material they'll shift. Got back to me boat. And this is where the tide is. Hmm. Well, I don't think my wheels are going to be much good. I'll be able to pull it down a bit. I'll have to suss this out. Here's the remains of the railway that came from uh, basically where my dinghy was to the resort. It's been 10 years like this in disarray. That tide's just started started to come in and I'm uh, resting in the shade of a tree till the tide comes in. It's just a bit of a waiting game. After walking yesterday and downloading the movie uh, I had to wait on the beach till five o'clock before I could uh, launch my dinghy. I've decided this is I'm not staying here because you know you can't do a walk for more than about a couple of hours so I'm gonna head off today it's uh, the weather forecast is uh, 15 to 20 from the southeast there's the resort up there. Carlisle Island. And there's quite a nice boat over here. I think it's got a single person on, I'm not sure. There's Ultimate Warrior, very nice boat. They uh, keep the boat in Rainbow Beach, they're retired. And uh, they're kind of trying to keep the tracks open here, so off they go in the morning for a couple of hours, the pair of them. They're 75 years of age. He runs the tracks and she walks. She's slowing down, he reckons. And behind us is another boat, and I think they're sailing to somewhere today. They're just getting their dinghy aboard. I'm leaving the anchorage behind. Gonna going round this corner here and uh, I'll head out a bit and then I'll uh, put the main up. This is where we going. This here is Goldsmith and this is Shore Island up here and uh, Shore Island will be about 22 nautical miles. It says 20 but uh, it won't be so it'll be about 22 to there and I think I'm going to shore today, but we may go to Goldsmith and tuck in behind there, I'm not sure. Keeping my options open. 
And this is Goldsmith and we're tucking somewhere in that area there if we go to Goldsmith. So anyway, I'm, uh, we're going okay. I've just got the fully reefed main and the jib up and we're doing 4.2 knots at the moment. And we're not totally away from the island yet. I'd, I think we'd get up to about five in a minute. That's looking back at the anchorage. Been going about, oh, I suppose, 15, 20 minutes now. It'll be a nice, it's turning out to be a good day. So I can't see any shower clouds around. So, and we're uh, cruising down to Goldsmith at the moment. So things are looking up. Just had to avoid the main there. Had me legs between the ropes. <laughs> anyway, survived that. I've uh, put out my uh, proper protein line today. Uh, see if I can catch a mackerel. Going between Goldsmith and Linney now. And this is Goldsmith. over here. By God, there's a whale there. I might just go try and go across and get that. I put the engine on for a minute or two because we're in the Lea Linney. I just want to press on through. We're doing 7.8 knots now with the tide. It's really pushing us on. Uh, around the back of this island, that headland over there, uh, there's uh, some quite nice anchorages. But I think they're being invaded by the swell at the moment, so I'm going to give those a miss. Yeah, Linny Island, you know, looks quite spectacular. Uh, with all the hoop pine trees growing on that face there and the rocks and the... It's very nice. Haven't caught anything on the protein line yet. Goldsmith on the other side looks okay, but it looks drier. Passing the northern end of Thomas Island here. There's a beautiful beach if it's blowing from the uh, north. Around the corner there and in here there's quite a nice anchorage around this corner in it like a horseshoe bay but uh, on a day like this when you've got quite a lot of swell running it'll be very rolly looking ahead there is the end of shore island when we get to that point there we've probably got about a couple of miles to go When you're coming down in the night, you know, it's like all along this coast, you know, there's, you've got to watch your navigation and there's kind of rocks strewn in quite a few places. I think my wife's ringing me now. This is uh, the Magic Miles, quite an old one. And this is Platypus Rock just here and we've got to go round Burning Point and in here uh, and it's very nice so there's all these beaches I can walk on Platypus Rock I was so much enjoying myself, I got forgot to film us going round the point. That's the end of Shore Island there. Blowing quite hard in here to be honest. This is the uh, 
burning point and the uh, boats in here. So I'm just going to head to wind now, motor in and take the sails down. Yeah, there's quite a few boats in this anchorage. Oh, coming on round. I've seen that guy before, he was at uh, Brampton. Yeah, this one here I've seen. And the two in front of that, they came from Brampton. So did this uh, catamaran just here. Anyway, I'm gonna go and put the anchor down somewhere. At Burning Point. Really nice here at the moment. It's blowing about uh, 15 knots from the southeast. I just got the weather forecast for uh, the next few days and it's going to blow uh, tonight. It should be only 20 knots uh, in the morning. That's you know from 12 o'clock onwards. It should be uh, 25 knots and then maybe 30 knots tomorrow. So since it's going to blow hard tonight, I'm going to let out all my chain and uh, say uh, six meters of rope. I've got a, a climbing rope courtesy my daughter there and the, uh, and the anchor road as well. And uh, they're going down about uh, four meters, I suppose. And uh, so I put all the chain out, which is 33 meters and about four meters of rope. And I put uh, the climbing rope out uh, first, that's tight, and then I've got the anchor road out second, which is a bit loose, so if one chafes through, the other one will catch, and hopefully I'll be all right, like that, if 30 knots comes. Taking the outboard off and everything out the dinghy so that can just flip and uh, cleaned up the cockpit in case I've got to move in the night. Was I'm making tea, the sun's just set over Cape Conway.